photosynthesis, limiting factors, and measuring photosynthesis. So there are three factors that can limit the amount of photosynthesis that's taking place. So we've got light, temperature, and the concentration of carbon dioxide. So photosynthesis is the chemical reaction that takes place inside of a plant. Carbon dioxide and water are chemically reacted together to produce glucose and oxygen. So if we look at what a limiting factor is, so in a process like photosynthesis, which is affected by one or more factor, its rate is limited by the factor which is closest to its minimum value. So at the point in time, if, there, if one of three factors is in low supply, then the rate of photosynthesis will be limited. You only have to change one limiting factor to either increase or decrease the amount of photosynthesis this is taking place. Without enough light, a plant cannot photosynthesize. So even if there's plenty of water and carbon dioxide. So we can see from this graph that as the light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases until a point. And that would be the point at which there was some of a limiting factor. So if we were looking at artificially increasing this rate, you could go and have things like high intensity light bulbs or something that is going to artificially increase the level of light. So carbon dioxide can sometimes limit the rate of photosynthesis. Generally, we consider that there is plenty of carbon dioxide in the air. But if we went and increased, so artificially increased, the amount of carbon dioxide by pumping it into a greenhouse or having something burning that released carbon dioxide, that would also go and increase the rate of photosynthesis. So temperature is the third limiting factor. So if it gets too cold, the rate of photosynthesis will increase. Plants cannot photosynthesize if it gets too hot. So if the temperature gets too hot, the enzymes that carry out photosynthesis will denature, so will no longer work, so therefore the rate of photosynthesis will decrease. So if we look at the change in this graph, the rate of photosynthesis increases until a point. After that point, or after that certain temperature, it will decrease. And the reason for this is because the enzymes that are carrying out photosynthesis will become denatured, so will no longer work. If we wanted to go and set up some sort of experiment looking at measuring the rate of photosynthesis, it can be done in a variety of ways. If we were looking at this experiment where we are changing light intensity, that can simply be done using palm weed and a lamp. We use palm weed because it's easy to see and measure the oxygen that's coming off from a plant that is growing underwater because you can physically see the bubbles coming off. To change the light intensity, all you would need to do is move the lamp further away. The further away you'd move it, the lower the light intensity will be. So some students investigate the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis in pond weed. The closer the lamp is to the pond weed, the more light the pond weed receives. The student place the lamp at different distances from the pond weed. They counted the number of bubbles of gas released from the pond weed in one minute at each distance. So if we went and looked at this, you might want to think about why it's important to use a thermometer in this investigation. It could be from any of the three. So to measure temperature, to check that the temperature isn't changing, and the temperature is a control variable that needs to stay constant. So one student concluded that the rate of photosynthesis was inversely proportional 
to the distance of the lamp from the plant. So this was correct. So as the distance increases, the rate decreases. So if we look at this graph, there is a straight line showing that it is proportional. So if we go and carry out an experiment, you can go and look at a number of things. You can look at carbon dioxide concentration, light intensity. We tend not to look at water and uh, we tend not so much to look at temperature. So you might end up with a graph or a table that looks like this. And a graph could look something like this. So if we look at this graph, you can see the effects of increasing carbon dioxide. So if we increase carbon dioxide, it increases the rate of photosynthesis. If we increase the light level, that increases the rate of photosynthesis. But they all level off at a certain point, and that will be due to some other limiting factor. So a farmer grew potato, uh, tomato plants in a greenhouse. So the graph shows the effect of light intensity on photosynthesis. So there are a few questions for us to think about. So uh, which light intensity was there a limiting factor for photosynthesis? So if we read that off the graph, you can see that that would be its light intensity of 45 lux. What was the highest rate of photosynthesis? That was nine because that is the point at which the graph levels off. So apart from light intensity, name one other limiting factor that the farmer could change to increase the rate of photosynthesis. So you might have something like temperature or carbon dioxide concentration. What type of energy does the plant need for photosynthesis? It needs light energy. And what would increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide have on the rate of photosynthesis? It would increase it.